here is Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today I have some Christmas cards using these gorgeous Lily of the Lat Valley penguin stamps and I'm going to be colouring using pencils on craft card. Now here was me thinking I'd come up with my wonderful original idea that I hadn't done before only to discover when I was doing last week's video and at the end you'll know at the end of the videos you'll see you, uh, there's a section that says you might also like and when I searched for videos to put in that section I saw that I had already done something very similar in November 2020 to what we're doing today. Now they are different images it is still lily of the valley and it's on craft card but what i'm doing here is different images to what we did before and i'm also going for a bulk make sort of version where i'm doing three of one image and three of another so although it's similar i hope you do enjoy it anyway and what i will do is i'll link that other video at the end of this one so you can have a look at that as well okay so let's get on and hope you enjoy Okay, so we're using these Paper Mania pre-scored A6 cards. They come as a pack of 50 with envelopes that are also in craft. And we're using the beautiful Lily of the Valley stamps. Now, as always, I'll put a list of products you used and their links in the blog post for you. So don't get too hung up if you miss any of the details. So all we're doing here is we're stamping our little penguin and we're going to stamp him using some clear embossing ink. In this instance, I'm going to be using Simon Says Stamp and I want him just a little bit up from the bottom because I'm going to actually be stamping a sentiment underneath now I'm using a stamp platform because that does make it easier when you're doing multiples of a stamp cards because you can just leave the stamp in the position and just put the card the next card in the corner and you can keep stamping as many as you want and you don't have to worry about repositioning it and getting it in the right place because it's always going to be in the right place as long as you put the card in the corner so we finished that one we did two more of it the same and then we move on to the second image this one we're doing um it as a landscape card and we're again doing this lovely penguin image this is probably one of my favorite stamps this is actually an image that i've used for, um colored using markers before and i use it on the top of my banner on my website as part of my christmas um sort of design for the website so for this one obviously because it's got a sentiment in the middle of the stamp is part of it we need to stamp that using a colored ink so i'm using my black versafine because it's quite a detailed stamp and it just comes out beautifully so again with that we do it two more times by this time the first lot are dry enough that i can tackle my sentiment without worrying i'm going to smudge it because this is a clear stamp so it's slightly lower i just didn't want to take any chances i don't think it would have caused a problem but it's not worth it since we had others to do and i felt this was a really cute sentiment to go with this image and again for this i'm using my versifying black ink and then again as with the others just keep putting your next card in until you've done all three so now we're on to the coloring and last time i did a coloring video i did ask whether you guys would prefer the coloring videos to be at a more slower pace but obviously that would make the video longer or whether you preferred it with it being sped up a bit and and a shorter video um the almost universal reply was that you preferred a longer video done at the slower speed so that you could see exactly what was going on and to me that's certainly how i prefer it when i watch coloring videos i like the purpose of watching them is to see the coloring and if it's sped up too much then obviously you don't get to see that so clearly however obviously i also was concerned that if the video became too long that that might be a something that puts people off so that's why I asked you the question and I definitely got a very definitive answer so as you know today's video is a bulk make Christmas card video so we're doing six cards as we said before three of each design however I'm not proposing obviously to show you coloring three of each the same design I will show you one of each design colored in and then we'll just show you the finished six cards at the end now you can see here that i'm coloring using my pencils these are prismacolor pencils and um, 
I like coloring with them on the craft card because things like the white and just generally the colors seem to just come up you get to see them really well it sort of seems to work off that sort of slight colored background really nicely I find it gives a nice coverage um you don't seem to see too much of the the brown coming through even through the white um so I don't find that a problem but also when you're doing things like snow or whatever the white obviously shows up a lot better on here than it would on white cardstock now you will notice just very slightly that where I'm coloring some of the bits are of the ink that we stamped are smudging slightly ideally I would have left this overnight to really dry I only left it sort of an hour and so it probably wasn't quite long enough but you know it's no big deal it's easy enough to correct those things I know for example like here I was going to have to go over the little eyebrow anyway with with a black pencil so it, it really wasn't a major problem so as you saw we have did our little penguin now we're going to do some more so I'll go through exactly what I did on that in a minute but I'm now working on the banner now with this obviously we've got a sentiment actually stamped on our banner so obviously if we were doing this on a white background cardstock you could easily it would already be white so it would look like a white banner but here we've got to give the illusion of the white so what I'm doing first of all is I'm using my sort of bluey grey colour that I'm um, used as my sort of shading for my white it's a very nice color for that it's got that kind of it's it's almost white because it's a very cool tone so it works really well and I'm just going through as you can see just those edgy bits and then I'm pulling from that a little bit further and just pulling out and going into the white now now what you'll see I'm doing as I go more towards the center of my little banner here you'll notice the angle of my pencil goes slightly flatter so in other words that the edge of the pencil is more horizontal to the page which gives a softer actual application of your pencil sort of a you can see there it's a very soft and also my actual um, pressure is a lot lighter so it's just giving a very soft delicate sort of smudgy look to that center area to give an illusion of it being a white banner we can't realistically color it all in because we would cover up our sentiment so we need to just provide that kind of mental kind of illusion that it is white and you can do that easily because things are shaded and so it's not a big problem and you can see I'm just very delicately just putting a little bit in between some of the letters and just very softly in the middle there and it just makes that illusion I think work really well and and by putting that slightly darker or I say very slightly darker you almost can't see it but if you didn't have it there that gray you would notice that it's not there it's a bit like on the penguins as well now for the brown here I'm just using one brown but what I'm doing is doing it at different uh, pressures to create some areas that are slightly darker and some that are just a little softer just to give the shadows because it's it's such a small amount that requires the brown that it really wasn't worth me faddling around to put um, two different colors on that now I've worked out what I'm doing with my penguins with regard to the white I now know I can do kind of the rest of them in one go so again sort of almost bulk coloring so I knew how I'm going to color them now I know that I'm going to use this is a slightly different um I think I, I don't know if that's the same gray as I used in the other one I think it's a slightly different one I will put a picture of the colors that I used up on the blog post for you but what you'll see is I've done the pink for their cheeks I didn't do any pink on the top penguin because where his little cheek would be pink it's actually hidden behind that part of the banner so I didn't do that but then I'm putting all the shading in with the grey so I'm doing that on all of the penguins first so you don't constantly be picking up a colour putting it down picking it up putting it down however as I went to do the top penguin I realised I'd missed a bit of the brown because I'd forgotten that there was some of the twiggy bits up the top there so I just went back in with that and you'll see I haven't perfectly coloured that there's gaps and that's not a problem because it gives that illusion of, of slight shading so it's no big deal so then I've going back to that 
sort of plan of doing all the grey so where we're putting the grey is really where it would be slightly darker so their face is around so when he's looking head on the bits at the side would be slightly darker because they're slightly further back so they would be darker in this top penguin's case uh, it's at the back of his head again because it's rounded and it's going back and also there's the twig and and the banner so all around that area would also be slightly gray as well but you can see it's very very subtle and all i'm doing I, and i forgot his little tummy here because i i didn't really sort of twig that twig um that that was also going to be white of course so i just went back to do that bit as well but what you'll see is that the gray is it really is almost like you can't see it but if you don't put it in you actually do notice it's actually the other way around when you do put it in your eye doesn't see it but you do see that there is shaping to your little critter and it does make a difference but it's subtle enough that it's not like whoa there's a bit of shading um it's just really subtle but it, it still does make a difference so if you're not confident to do that then obviously leave it out but i think this would be quite a good option to try it out because if it went horribly wrong with the shading you're really not going to see it that much so it's not like a major deal so it's quite a nice way to sort of practice your shading and again with the little pink cheeks what you'll notice is when it looks quite bright and what I do is I start around the edges of the little pink you'll see I'm sort of going around it in a circle and then I go right over the top just to soften it down so again it's not like he's got like a huge amount of big rouge dot on his cheeks he's just got little cute pink cheeks and then obviously I've gone in with the black just to do the eye eyes and the eyebrows and then while I had the grey and the white in my hand I went in and did the snow later on I actually didn't do this till later because what I found was that it's not majorly a problem but it was sort of like where I was leaning and I was just concerned so I, later on I had to end up putting a tissue over it so that I didn't um sort of feel like I might smudge it or anything so I was just being a little I felt like actually it was probably better to do that later but you know it's no big deal so now I'm doing their little noses or beaks and their feet um, and I'm, again, I'm using two colours for this. And again, all of this is quite a good one for practising your shading because you really none of this is really strong shading so apart from perhaps maybe when you get to the black but again you can leave that if you want but at this point certainly you're doing very delicate shading so if it goes wrong you're really not going to see it like so obviously and to be honest you can't really go wrong because you're just doing a little dot of yellow with a bit of orange around it it's not going to be a major deal now what I will say you can't see it so much at the moment but you'll see that I'm working on the black which is something I use always when I'm crafting on film because it creates a nicer background than if I'm on a craft mat which has loads of lines and it, it can get a bit annoying behind the work as you're on the camera especially if it doesn't look straight but what I didn't realize until later when I started coloring the ones off camera was that it was actually causing me a slight problem it didn't show in life but you'll see perhaps maybe a little bit later more than you can now is that it's giving a slight indentation it's it's allowing the pencil to push into the card a little bit more because the rubber has some give so that was a mistake on my part but what I will say is if you do notice that because in certain lights you can kind of see where it almost looks a little bit dented um it didn't show in life so it wasn't so much of a deal I think with the camera lights and stuff it picked it up a little bit more than than it does in with the naked eye but it certainly is something to bear in mind to make sure that when you're working I think you can see it there a little bit that when you're working with your pencils on that is to make sure that you're working on a not like maybe a super hard surface but something that's not as soft as this that I'm working on so your craft mat would be perfect 
but this as you can see there you can really see it on this one you can see how it's just denting his little foot in um and as i said you can't see it with the naked eye and so i didn't notice it and literally until i started editing this video um and you'll also notice i keep sort of seeming you can see like a little flick this is just like a dust brush that you can get for makeup or, or just um one of those sort of brushes that you can use for inking obviously make sure it's a clean one um and it's just to get rid of the little well they call it bloom but basically the little bits that the pencil makes particularly prisma pencils which is what these are um they are very very waxy so as you color you get lots of little bits coming off them if you were to just swipe them off with your hand they tend to create like a line it, it literally sort of creates that color like a, a smudge line across the page but if you use a feather is a really good one as well something really light so obviously if you're using a brush make sure you do it very lightly but you just want to almost waft it off rather than actually put any pressure on um because otherwise as i said it leaves like these little smudge marks across your page which is just a nightmare so now we've done all their little feet and things we're starting on the black now a couple of things about black one people are always quite frightened i think about coloring using blacks um i think the thing is two twofold one um you want to be not scared to put light areas in. I think a lot of people think, oh, it's black, so you don't put in some quite light areas. And actually black has some quite bright light areas in it. So don't be afraid to do that. Now, I haven't gone for the complete like white, which you can go right down to that um, and it will still look fine. But I'm using like the gray. Um, it's a different gray to the gray that I used on the white um and it just creates that sort of shading now um we're going slightly off camera here but um you can just see up just about now again what i'm doing is i'm just doing the first penguin in its entirety so that i can get a feel for how i'm working you know how the colors blend what's the best way to do it because sometimes when you're doing this you're just like right which which way round is it do i do the dark first do i do the light first how does it work now what i discovered with this is that the gray was very powerful over the black so i needed to be quite careful it was great it actually was good you wanted to go over the all of the black because it gave a nice smooth look to it as it as a whole so i did want it to go across all of the black because it kind of smoothed it out and made it not look like coloring it made it look like this beautiful smooth image but on the other hand we didn't want it to be like that it wasn't black anymore so there were parts that we needed to be careful now here i changed what i did a bit later i went here from the gray in the sort of um area that was blank and went down to the black what i found later was that it was better to use the gray and pull up from the black because the black then dragged up into the gray and and sort of um blended really well and you'll see i went with the gray just very lightly down over the last bit of black as well um and then also just a little bit of more black at the top there um but you can see there's some quite light areas in that and yet it still looks like a black penguin and it just gives good shading to it and you know it's it's worth giving it a go it, it again you can't really go that wrong with it um it's not going to look terrible so what we're going to do here you can see i'm just starting with this little head and i'm putting the black on and i think this is where i start to get a little bit more uh comfortable with how the two colors are working together so you can see here there what i was talking about earlier i'm taking the black and dragging it forward to the center area so that it really blends that black out because what happens is the the gray pencil almost picks up some of that black and drags it forward so you get a really nice blend and then just where i've gone over the black there with the gray because it does 
as I said, smooth it out really nicely. I just went over with a little bit of black where I wanted it that little bit darker. But you can see it, it doesn't need to be fussy. That's not perfect. There's bits where there's a bit there that's a bit darker and a bit with it a bit lighter. That's not a problem. Um, and you can see here, I'm just putting the black around the edges. I'm just putting a bit of the gray in the middle. Now this little wing caused me no end of grief. It took ages. I did cut out a little bit of that. I did say to you, I was giving you a, um, a sort of almost a live sort of showing of this, but I did have to cut that out because I spent ages on that little wing. It just did not want to go right. But you know, in the end, we got there to something that was good enough. And I, I realised what was happening was I was over fussing with it. And that was the problem. And it was that was what was making it go wrong. So you'll see here again, I'm just it's a little bit hard because my fingers have got in the way a little bit. But I'm just dragging that um, black down again. But what happened was that you couldn't see the edge of the wing. So I'm just fiddling around with that to just give some distinction by adding a bit of the black around the edge there just to make sure that that is distinct from the wing. So that's again, you want to be just aware of the, the shading there so that the edge of the wing I made a little bit darker and then the bit that actually technically would be shaded. So it probably should have been the other way around. I should have probably made the edge of the wing lighter and the bit of his body under the wing should have been the darker bit. But you know, who cares? I mean, you know, the people that receive these cards are really not going to be that fussy about it. So just do what you think looks right. And if it doesn't go quite right, it's no big deal. Um, so again, here we are on another little wing. Same principle again, just working the grey and the black till they blend up together. Now that is quite a light area because this little wing is kind of holding over the top there. So we want the tip of the wing on that previous one nice and light and then on this one we're just again it's coming round from the edge there so that would be just a little bit lighter on that edge because it's curving around sort of down towards the banner so I'm making that bit darker so that it makes it look like it's curved but as I said don't get too hung up on that when you're first learning the blending part of it be consistent in so far as relatively speaking you know don't do light one side and then light the other side but uh, unless obviously it's like head on and he's got shadowing both sides of his face but generally you know make it that the light's coming from one direction but you don't need to get too hung up on that first worry about the technique of actual blending so that you're happy with how that's working for you now what i did here was i was just adding the gray in the middle there because i wanted to make sure i didn't to put too much black on and then you can see look how it's pushing that black out from the edge how i'm grabbing that and you can see it's literally dragging the black into that gray and it really is very effective. And also it's very hard to see here, but it smooths it out. Now that's something you do have to be careful with because um, the paler colors like grays, the pale grays, the pale whites, etc., anything that's paler will always smooth out your paper. So you wanna be sure that you've got the darker pigment to roughly where you want it to be before you start smoothing it out because it is then harder to add more of the darker color once it starts smoothing. But on these little things, you're going to be not doing that many layers that it's too much of a big deal. Um, and you'll notice here that we have a little bit of sort of the smudging around underneath his tummy there. That was actually the grey, but it's it's sort of um, from where I'd done his tummy. But it looks like the black smudged. But I quite liked it, so I left it alone. Again, no big deal. It's just fine as it is. Um, I'm just avoiding that little um, string here so that we can still see that. But if you do mess up and you go over it, one, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of obvious it's going through his little hand. But two, if you do, you can always go in and put a, another line in with, with your pencil. So it's not a big deal. So here his, he's looking head on. So as we did with his face, the sides parts of his face are going to be the darkest. And the top of his head, where it's sort of the light, I guess, would be coming down, is where I said it would be the lightest however it could actually be that the back 
part would be it would be kind of the middle part actually rather than the very top so in some ways I didn't really do this very well in the fact that technically um, lighting wise it's probably more sort of towards his nose bit that would be the lightest because that's nearest at the front and the top of his head might actually be darker because it's curving away from us but what my point is really is that it doesn't matter um it still looks good and it still looks cute and you know it's it's a cartoony image it's not like you know super lifelike and so that's that one done and and you can see it was really effective and it looks really really cute so then all we need to do to finalize it is just fold it over obviously we've got two others to do and what I personally would do is I would do all three of one design in one go before you move on to the next one because you've got into a rhythm of what you've done with this particular card um, when you fold it over the other way just put it onto the tissue just to be sure not to smudge it on anything but uh yeah there it is done and I think that looks cute this is one of my favorite images it's one that I use um on my website and I just love it so now we're on to the other penguin now I do cut some of this out a little bit because obviously you've seen me do some of this already so I just try to shorten it a little bit for you so we're going to be working on his tummy as we did before and because we've kind of got used to how the pencils are working now with regard to the blending etc I'm moving on with the gray well in this case the pink I'm putting the cheeks in but I'm moving on to all of the white so I'm putting the gray in first for all of the white and then white area I mean and then I'm going in with the white pencil um, now this is obviously a no lines drawing because we've got stamped it using the clear ink so what we want to do is be careful where things like the eyes are so we can remember where to put them in but we also want to be sure to try and cover up the lines with our coloring so that when we actually finish this whereas normally you go up to a line on this you want to go up to it and slightly over so that's why it's quite good starting with the light colors for example because then when you go in with the darker colors in on the next section you'll kind of be able to just cover over that bit if where it's sort of overlapped a little bit and it gives you that area where you've completely covered it so then we're doing his little tummy very easy I've made it quite sort of fluffy looking around there because he had some feathers so I just sort of made it look quite fluffy um, obviously you saw I did this beak and his little eyes are done and now we're working on his feet and I think this is the one where you can particularly see where the um, pressure you can see there is really digging in and making a difference because I was trying really hard to cover that um, edge of the line with the yellow and it just was not playing ball so I was pressing a little bit harder to try and get that edge uh edge that line covered so then you can see there that the little feet are done and you could see all that excess sort of uh bits of bloom as it, as it's called and so we just sw swiped that off and now we're starting on the black so again we're working with the gray uh, just a little bit here because that's quite underneath so we want that quite dark and exactly as before just taking the black and the gray and blending that out now you can see I just thought mm, I'll put this line in so I can see exactly how I want things to be um, I think I was concerned that I would forget that that was a wing um, and you can see here I didn't show you every little bit of the blending on that one it took quite a bit of time actually to get this how I liked it but that is the beauty of the pencils that you get the time to do that so then we go on to his head and we just do exactly as we did with all the other penguins obviously he's a little bit bigger but the principle is the same so I didn't show you all of that I didn't want to go into repeating what you've already seen so now we are working on the scarf so I've got two different sets of colors so I've got a green and a red I'm doing a green and red stripy scarf so I've got two red colors and two green colors so we've got a lighter red and a richer red so basically with this I've got a more orangey red and a more pillar box red so 
what you want to do when you've got something like stripes is make sure that the bo the bottom and the top parts really do level up well but the other thing that you can do is to make sure that the shading actually levels up so you want the level of the shading to be nice and smooth all the way through so it kind of follows and doesn't look jarring so you don't have you know a small amount of shading say on the green and then and then it goes to very deep shading on the red you can see actually I put all the dark colors in first so that I could see that they followed through nice and smoothly um, the reason I'm afraid I jumped that part was because for some reason I dropped off camera and you couldn't see it but you got the idea there with how that worked and hopefully you'll see a little bit more here it is quite hard sometimes because you get involved and you don't realize that you've moved off camera or your hand is completely in the way the other thing I would mention is ideally I would have kept sharpening these pencils a little bit more however for some reason my sharpener decided to be a pain in the bum and it just kept basically shredding the pencils like the lead and it was then making Making the lead just break away it was literally just taking chunks out of it I, I, it's obviously something's gone wrong and I need to get a new one so I was being quite cautious and <laughs> I ended up using a makeup pencil sharpener which is obviously designed for quite soft pencils and soft uh, leads inverted commas so that was okay but it just didn't bring it up to the most sharpest of points but at least it stopped it being completely dull so you can see here I'm just doing all the reds and I'm doing all the dark red and you can see that I'm trying to make sure that those shaded areas are level with themselves but also that the bottom edge is smooth so it looks like it's one scarf it doesn't look like you've got a bit of red a bit of green and they're not following on nicely so you can see there that the shading kind of follows through nice and evenly but also that bottom edge follows nice and smoothly and then you want to make sure you do the same at the top it's quite easy to get involved in blending out your colors and you forget that you want to be sure that the top edge sort of follows through or the bottom edge whichever follows through nice and evenly um, and that's where having a sharper pencil definitely would have been easier because I could have found that a lot simpler to get a nice crisp smooth line and then to, because basically what I would have done was put the line in as you're seeing I'm trying to do there I mean I think you can just see it under my fingers but because the pencil was not that sharp it wasn't that easy to as it could have been to do that but you know it worked it's not a big deal it's a scarf it's fluffy you know so it doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect and you know let's be honest most people don't look that closely they look at it and think oh, oh my goodness that's so cute so long as you've done a you know a reasonable job it it's not going to be something that stands out most of the time so then we've got the rest of the scarf kind of going around his neck and just coming up under his little foot there and his little wing so that bit I've done the shading on both sides because obviously it would be dark under his wing but also on that bottom edge as well because it's sort of curved away again just do it anywhere you know long as it kind of you definitely want it to follow through on the bottom edge because that's kind of what you did already so it would make sense for it to kind of follow through there but you know get don't get too hung up just use this if you if you're brave enough to, as an opportunity to practice the shading because these are really good images for that they're not going to be anything on them that's going to look terrible if you do it not quite perfect and also a lot of the colors like here even the red and green it's a very subtle difference so even if you don't do it absolutely perfect you're really not going to see it it's not going to stand out like a sore thumb um i mean the most different one really for the shading was the was the feet where we used yellow and orange and you could just pick um, a darker orange and a, a slightly lighter orange if that was slightly concerning to you to use such sort of contrasting colors just change them slightly I just picked it because that's what I sort of thought would look kind of fun to bring that yellow into it but um, it really wasn't you know a big deal that it needed to be that color it was just because I thought it would be nice to have a yellowy shade um, because we had a lot of like every other sort of shade in there and I just thought it would balance it out so here I'm doing the scarf that's around his neck part now so I've just done the red 
and then just brushing off and now I'm going to work on the green again putting in the darker color first and then I'm doing the lighter green I'm really sorry that sometimes it's hard to see exactly what's going on but you sort of need to quite at certain points you need to have your pencil almost in that upright position and therefore it makes it hard for me to get the camera at an angle where you can see um you know if I put the camera sort of at the side it it looks kind of weird as well so it, it's better I think generally if it's from the upright position but that does mean occasionally you're just kind of not seeing everything that's going on because my fingers are in the way I do try to color in a way that you can see but there's a sort of balance between coloring where you can see but also I want to color in a way that shows you technique I mean I'm not any sort of expert but I know that you guys have said to me, you know, you wanted to know why, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And if I then change how I'm doing it in order to allow you to see it, it gives a false impression of how I actually colour. So it's sort of balancing that up, really. So then we've got the last bit, I think, is it? Oh, no, we've got one bit of green, a very small little line of green. I think there was one area where I just thought, oh, stuff this, <laughs> I'm going to do this as the same colour because it was so narrow. <laughs> but on this one, I decided to do the green because it's um got no, you colour over the lines, you can't see it. So I just was like, oh, no, this bit's too narrow. I quite like it, a wider section here. But uh, on this one, I, I did carry on. But, uh, yeah, I think it looks good. I like the red and green. It's very Christmassy. So then that's the scarf pretty much done. I just added a little of the little over those little tassely bits just to add that kind of fluff to the to the scarf and then I decided I wanted to just do the snow so as before we did the grey and then the white just very soft then I noticed these little lines so I thought they would be nice in white there is actually another little set down by the uh, scarf which I did see later and complete but I didn't see um, you won't notice that until the very finished set of six so now with these presents I decided that I wanted to do them in non-Christmas colours to bring because I didn't want to do red and green again um, so I played around with some colour combinations and the other thing I did was I didn't necessarily always want to use the twine that they wrapped around because we've got no line stamping here we can play around with that as well so on this one I did use the dots so I put white in for the dots but what we we're doing here is we need to shade our presence so that because we're not going to see the lines it's not like with the black if we had the black it would show the lines so you would have distinct areas that would show you the edges and the corners of the presence with this we do need to shade them in order for those um, edges to show so what we did was I used the dark I've got three colors basic uh, yeah three colors that I'm using basically on each present I've got the dark color of whatever color it is I've got the mid-tone color so the lighter of the actual two colors and then I also use white so what I'm doing here is I'm doing the bottom of the present the darkest so I'm using my darkest color I did go over it a little bit with the pale color just to help some blending but then I go back over it with the darker color and then I'm going over the edge piece here with the dark color and the mid color the second color the lighter of the two colors not the white and that's giving us like a mid-tone I then I'm going to go over the front part of the present using the light color only and then the white to blend just to give a little bit more lightness to that front now as I said you do need that in order to really give the distinction between those three sides of the present that are visible if you don't use different tones I mean the other thing you could do if you're not comfortable with actual blending is pick out three similar colors and use the darker one on the bottom 
the mid one on the side and then the lighter one on the front so then you don't have to do any blending if that's sort of easier for you um, but obviously I like doing the blending and that suits me so what I've done here um you'll notice I'm putting just a little bit of the dark round his face there where it would have been shaded just a tiny bit and then we're just going down that edge again just to add a little bit more distinction on that final edge and also a little bit of darkness around the bottom as well and it looks like I haven't used any white on this one at the moment I don't I think I must have just stuck to no I did oh no that's just for the dots I think I just used the white on this one for the dots I didn't actually use any white on the present but the rest of them I'm pretty sure I did well we'll see how it goes it's, it's you'd think it was ages ago but anyway so now we're going for like a bluey purpley blue it looks purple here but it's much more blue than it looks um and so we're starting off at the bottom and this one's a nice and sharp thank goodness and we're just doing a nice clean dark edge there so then you'll see the end haven't quite completed that and then i'm going in with the lighter bluey color again as i said it looks purple but it actually is blue when you see the next one which is blue you'll see that this is uh, the next one that is purple you'll see that this is blue and then it went a bit lighter than i wanted so i went back in with the darker color and just went over it just to try and sort of give it that mid color again as i said you could easily just use three tones if you wanted to and do it plain i quite like the blended look so um you know that didn't bother me i quite like how it sort of shades up from sort of the darker tone to the lighter tone and you'll see i'm just going over the bottom there with the lighter color just because it gives a nice blended feel to that darker color and it just helps i think not make it quite so stark but then i do still need to go over it just a little bit just to sharpen it up around some of those edges just to make sure that it comes out nicely and now we're going over the final side the front side and we're going to use the pale blue and on this one we're definitely using the white to use as our final color there just to help us blend and create a lighter tone to that front piece so that it really kind of does look different to the rest of it and it's going from the mid-tone through to a lighter tone so it's just creating that blend as well from so what you've got is that end piece the end side and it's blending from that you've got still a distinctive edge even though you haven't got a line showing and but it's blending through nicely to that top edge where it's a bit whiter and i think that just gives a really nice effect um, but as I said, if you're not comfortable with that, then go for your three colours and you'll still find it looks really effective and you'll still get that look. But you need to make sure that the tones are close enough that it's not so too stark. So now you'll see that that was really blue, even though it looked purpley. I don't know why it looks so purple in, on the camera, but it is actually really blue. But now compared to this, you can see that it is actually blue. Um, and you can also see that this pencil is anything but sharp. Um, so we had a bit more problems getting nice crisp edges, which is why I'm a little bit more upright. So we've got that bottom edge again, the bottom side again in the dark, same sort of principle as all the others. So we're getting then our mid-tone. This time I'm putting the mid-tone on before I do the dark. I don't know why. I guess I decided that because I was blending it mostly as a darker colour with just a little bit of the paler color that I wanted to put that on first and go over it with the dark but in all honesty I don't think it makes any difference I think whichever way will work you get a sort of general tone and shaded through to the lighter color at the top but the main thing you want is that distinction that's there but not like super strong between all three sides I think it's nice when it's you've got that kind of line you can see there it didn't it got lost it got blurred it wasn't enough so we just went in with the darker color but it's nice when it's there but it's subtle because i think that's how it is you don't tend to have lines in real life so that's the beauty of having these no line drawing kind of things it's sort of quite effective so again on here we've got 
the final side and you can see how I'm losing that edge where the sort of end piece is joining onto the front. So that's why I'm putting quite a lot of white on this one because I was just losing it. I'm not losing it at the bottom there, but it was just blending away completely um, from that edge on the um, right, uh, sorry, left end even. Gosh, I don't know my lefts and rights. Um, so then you'll see I was still not happy even once I put the white. So I've gone back in with the darker color just trying to create that edge piece a bit, but I'm gonna be fiddling around with it, I think, because even now, what you've got now instead is a line, so I didn't think that was ideal either. So we're just gonna finish on the front here, and then we'll probably go and keep fiddling with it until we get the color that we want so that it, it works nicely. Um, and we've got the white coming back in, just blending that through just to lighten this purple up and again to come up to the edge and you can see how my white pencil needs desperately sharpening and it actually went past the line quite a lot on that end there and so we're going to have to tidy that up as well. But you can see how I'm bringing the white quite far over to try and help with that distinction between the edge piece there and here I was just not happy how I'd done that. So we're just fiddling around. And there I think uh, I'm just trying to sharpen that edge up on the air there where I've got the white and gone wrong slightly. But uh, otherwise I think, I think that's looking a lot better now. We've got that sort of distinction and we're just darkening that end up, making sure that that sort of looks the same. And yeah, that was all done. Now on this one is the one time that I am actually using the ribbon. I thought that that would be nice just on one of them to actually put that because they all had it or most of them did, but it gets a little bit fiddly if you're not careful. And I just didn't think it needed. I thought there was enough going on. Um, so on this one, we're going for sort of a pinky color. Um, I think that sort of blended up really nicely, sort of your aqua to your blue, to your purple, then to your pink. I think it looked nice and bright and cheerful. Um, so again, we've got our darker color on the bottom, then we're going for our mid color and dark color on the side, just as before. Um, and then I decided I just wanted to pick up a little bit of the purple, just to darken that bottom edge just a little bit more. And I thought if I blended in the purple with it, that it would work and just add that. I have to say, I didn't do that on the later images. I didn't remember that I did that and I just used the dark color and I blended out the mid section here much further down with that lighter color and it worked fine. Um, so you don't have to add that little bit of purple if you don't want to, um, as I said. And then you'll see there, I just went a bit lighter with the dark color because I'm trying to create sort of a, a mid tone with that sort of dark color and the light color together just to create sort of that blended look. Um, so that also that when it puts that front side on, it's distinctive enough that it keeps that line that you can see that it's a side and a corner. So again, all of these presents are really just repeating the same process of darker color on the bottom, darker color shading up to the lighter of the two colors on the end and blending that out. It's still taking that lighter tone down to the bottom edge, but it is darker than the top corner, but it's lighter than the bottom because you've got the two colors mixed and blended together. And then just taking the lighter color on the front and potentially with the white if necessary. And there it is done. So you can see all three really simple. You just keep repeating that process and it looks really effective. And I personally like the way that you do it with the shading, but you could easily, as I say, do it with just doing three tones, but you definitely need to pick those three colors really carefully to be sure that they work. But there it is done. So then obviously I'm gonna go and repeat that process 
on three two more of each of those now for this one because it had that sentiment on the front but it didn't actually say merry christmas i just stamped merry christmas on the inside as well so that it kind of made the actual sentiment of merry christmas on there so that is the three cards of each style done and i think they came out really really well they weren't that difficult to do i would say that personally i'd give yourself a little break in between each one because your hand can get a bit achy otherwise but it was fun and it was nice to do some coloring and i think the good thing is that they're just simple cards but they look really nice they're not got loads of layers so it's nice and easy to post and everything you need you know that's simple at christmas um but it is nice because you've kind of put some effort in and people like that and appreciate that I guess okay so I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I know it's longer and I hope that you've enjoyed it in this format I'd love to hear what you have to say about it because obviously it's a bit different to what we normally do um, don't forget to go on across to the blog post it will show you all of the photos of the card so you get some really good close-ups and also details of the colors used um etc uh, etc et okay thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon bye for now bye